we have a new Magic Champion! You will know. And when you leave the stage and the lights, you won't have to tell anyone because they will already know. When you walk into a room, you will see it in their eyes. Hear their whispers. Feel their respect. And it's gone. Done. Kaput. Finito. It failed. Wizards of the Coast failed and have recently announced that after this season, the Magic Pro League is to be no more. It lasted two years. They completely deconstructed the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour for this. The Pro Tour, which was a driving force of the game since 1996. And what they replaced it with was, from day one, filled with problems, confusion, criticism, but most damning of all, apathy. 25 years of history and success decimated, not to mention tangential things like the Magic Hall of Fame, gone, 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 all so they could try and make Arena the center of the Magic the Gathering experience. What does this mean for competitive magic? Believe it or not, the ending of pro magic might actually be one of the best things that could happen for competitive magic, while the reasons for the MPL failing may not be what you think, and I'd like to tell you why. The real question at hand is, even with competitive magic continuing in some form, what does the end of the Magic Pro League mean for organized play? Specifically, what form will it take? First, I want to make a concept very, very clear here. Professional magic does not equal competitive magic, and many Magic the Gathering players have confused these two terms, thinking that the end of pro magic means the end of competitive magic. It does not. Professional magic is the idea that a person can be a high-level magic player as a full-time job, specifically by being a part of the pro or rivals leagues, with an actual salary paid for by Wizards of the Coast. This concept began with the MPL, as under the old Pro Tour system, prize money alone did not always equal a full-time salary, if ever, and top players subsidized their lifestyles with article writing, streaming, and other content creation, and, in many cases, just having day jobs outside of Magic. In their article announcing the end of pro play, Wizards of the Coast emphasized that a new system would be coming at some unspecified point in time. And though there were absolutely no details about this new system offered in the article, there is an extreme emphasis on in-person play with the phrase, The Gathering, mentioned repeatedly, and even being the title of a section of the article. COVID was also stated the exact same number of times as The Gathering in this announcement about the end of pro play. And looking at that strange emphasis has me wondering, is Wizards of the Coast trying to somehow blame the pandemic on the failure of their pro league? I'm sorry, but the pro leagues were designed to pretty much feature Magic Arena gameplay. And so if COVID were to have any effect on people's interest in watching and subsequently playing digital games, it would have been more of a positive, not a hindrance. Everyone is stuck at home, watching and playing online games. Esports saw one of their biggest growth years in 2020, after all. If anything, Pro Magic and Arena viewership should have boomed due to COVID. But it didn't. It failed. What exactly happened, and where exactly are we headed? Now, obviously, I am approaching this video from the standpoint of exactly what I am, a casual viewer. I was not a pro magic player and will not attempt to comment on pro magic player concerns or perspectives. For that, you should go directly to the source, as many of those affected by this have been offering their views, their insight, and they are, like the players themselves, intelligent and keen insights into this situation. Of particular note is friend of the channel Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa's video discussing the situation at length. I will link to that video in this video's description if you want to hear the perspective of one of the greatest Magic the Gathering players in the world, who I, one of the worst Magic the Gathering players in the world, actually got to interview about, you guessed it, the future of pro magic less than half a year ago and many portentous things were said 
I'll link that video as well. Professional magic failed for many reasons. Not the least of all was a convoluted system that even the pros often acknowledged was absolutely perplexing. For me, just as a casual spectator, a casual viewer and fan of watching high-level magic gameplay, the MPL and Rivals Leagues failed because no one could understand how they worked. And I made a video about how they worked, and I still didn't understand. Let's start at the very top. The first and biggest major event to look at is the Players Tour Finals. There are to be three of these events in a year, with high MPL placed members in the top 16 will remain for the 2020 to 2021 season. We'll touch on how rankings are calculated. The Players Tour Finals events will come from the regional Players Tour for events each of the three Players the Tour Final events. There will be a total of nine this players that some events were in a yearly in season. the United States. They could these are going to be the non MPL players with the highest number, but they've missed. In, in, in the regional players in 2019, each fed by bottom three 12 regional players, players will no events. longer be a part of the MPL. It ended up being one of my lowest viewed videos of all time, with the very few comments being players expressing absolute befuddlement in the MPL system. To be clear, it wasn't the failing of my professional writer, nor my editor, nor even me as presenter, that the system didn't seem to make sense. It was that the system didn't make any sense, and the only thing that was clear about it was that you would never be a part of it. Watching the events held little interest because it was hard to grasp what, if anything, was at stake. Not to mention that the average player had no hope of ever getting in, certainly not in the way they did have a possibility under the old system. You know, there's the dream that you'll top eight a GP, go to the Pro Tour one day. The attraction of watching Magic events is not just the attraction of watching the best players in the world compete. Yes, that is an aspect, but a key component is the possibility that you or your friends might one day be able to sit in that chair, on that camera, and get there too. Even for people such as myself who didn't go to Grand Prix for the main event, that possibility was tantalizing. The shift to a pro magic league cuts it out entirely. Less than a year after that video of mine went up, Wizards overhauled the entire system, making numerous changes. When I was asked by some viewers if I'd put out an updated video explaining the new system, I declined. I couldn't understand it or the point of it, and I wasn't alone. In a lot of ways, Wizards of the Coast seemed much more interested in the spectacle of the MPL than organic, genuine audience engagement. Early on, they invested heavily in embedded videos and streams so that these events would appear to have huge viewership, misleading many to believe that now, all of a sudden, 100,000 people are tuning in to watch a streamed Magic Arena event. But it was like being a guitar hero, you know? They'd achieved all of the fame of being an esports rock star without actually learning how to play an instrument. Heck, their instrument was still in beta and didn't even have a spectator mode, but more on that in a bit. I've mentioned that one factor was not understanding the stakes. Another was entry into the MPL was not something the average player could aspire towards. But another key factor was simply that of communication. No one knew when any of these events were even happening. Outreach to the community and creators was minimal at best. Not only could Wizards of the Coast not explain how their new system worked, they also didn't seem to know how to let people know when events were going on. Or perhaps they didn't even consider that to be one of the goals, one of their priorities, as attention was, again, heavily tied up in courting non-Magic players and results inflated with view bots. Anecdotally, and again, anecdotally, I can say that as one of the largest Magic the Gathering YouTube channels with an audience of enthusiastic casuals in the hundreds of thousands, not once was I invited to make a video about the MPL or the events they were playing in. And I don't mean something like some paid advertisement or inviting me to be a part of the system. I just mean like, you know, publicity. Just someone reaching out in terms of press communication saying, hey, we'd love you, a creator, to know about and be excited about the pro leagues and pro league play. Maybe you'll share that excitement with your audience. 
yeah, that's something I might have done, but not once was I even told by Wizards an event was happening, and I was not alone. So that, to me, is why the Pro League failed. A convoluted system that few could understand, events that few knew were taking place, and most damning, no clear system for the average Magic player to aspire to become a part of. But while Wizards of the Coast is pulling the plug on the MPL and Rivals Pro Leagues, competitive play will continue, and if anything, it has the possibility to grow and thrive. If Wizards of the Coast has learned anything from their mistakes and also understands that organized play is a crucial part of the game's ecosystem, then they can conceivably bring in a replacement system that, while not having a salaried pro lifestyle, has the possibility of entry and access for the average player. A system that anyone can aspire to be a part of, that anyone can try and compete in and win in, or at the very least understand the system of, a system that people will tune in to watch and see their friends in feature matches and dream, perhaps one day, of being on that camera as well. In all honesty, we had that system. That's what's so frustrating. I mean, it wasn't perfect, far from it, but it was what now Wizards of the Coast is going to have to put in a lot of work just to find a way back towards, if that's even what they want. This is where a clear, fully developed plan would have really helped. But it looks as though Wizards of the Coast has no plan, just vague hopes. I worry that the remaining months of the Pro Tour will wash away any sense of urgency, and that when time is up, Wizards of the Coast may repeat the exact same mistakes they did with the MPL, rolling out an incomplete and poorly thought out system, and then never truly being willing to listen to critical feedback. Of particular note to me is this particular tweet from Watsi, saying that while what they envision will be similar to the Pro Tours and Grand Prix events, it won't be exactly that. So it's not just gonna come back to how it was. And already I'm worried. P people just keep expecting the old system to come back, but Watsi wants to be clear that they're gonna try for something like that, but not that. More alarming to me are statements made about the vision they have of high-level Magic players existing as high-level Magic players outside of any organized structure, such as Blake talked about in his stream here. These are the players that show you what the best play in the world looks like, and, and they should do that. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be tied with them being in a high-level event. Paulo Vitor Domodorosic can never play in a could never play in a high level event ever again. Would that make his advice any less useful? Absolutely not. Would that make seeing him endorse um, you know a certain deck any less influential? Absolutely not. Um, so th they are not mutually exclusive. Now that was one part of a long, long stream. I will link that in this video's description as well. I encourage you to watch it. Don't be mean to Blake. He's just trying to explain a system that other people have made decisions on. If anything, he deserves a raise. But what concerns me is that if that is the philosophy that corporate has behind the scenes, oh, you know, the big pros can still do what they do without an actual organized system, well, that means they might be leaning towards not having that much of an organized system. I fear that they'd rather competitive magic take place outside their zone of responsibility. It's all a lot of work, you know, putting on GPs and players complaining, and if stores and players and tournament organizers could just, you know, do whatever over there, that would sure be swell. Esports is hard, but whatever system they do come up with, a key component here is both Wizards of the Coast's ability to plan and implement it, something they now have a very bad track record at. And also, they need to bank heavily on community goodwill and trust, two things that all their recent disasters have put in short supply. 
You see, when you tear down a 25-year institution because of the overnight and fleeting success of a digital version of your game, a game that at the time was still in beta and to this day does not have things like a spectator or multiplayer mode, and those things don't seem like they're coming anytime soon, when you ask people to trust in you their livelihoods and then abandon those same people a little over a year later, when you write in your article the value of the gathering, the gathering, the gathering, but move further and further away from the local game store with your actions in real life. Paper to digital, game stores to Amazon, literally putting ads in your paper pack saying, hey, no table required. Buy secret layers from us instead of supporting your local game store. Can we introduce you to Amazon.com? Well, trust is a lot to ask. And that is why Wizards of the Coast is the biggest loser here. The failure of the MPL wasn't because of COVID, nor the pros, nor the players. The failure, front and center, was the company that mismanaged and mishandled the pro league, introduced a system that wasn't even finished, kept revising and rewriting how it would go, and never communicating properly what it truly was or when it was happening. And when the success of the next iteration means learning from their mistakes, listening to their critics, engaging with and taking on board the people who disagree with them in order to fix what it is they are doing wrong, long-term thinking and planning, well, I'm hopeful, but also hesitant and nervous. In the end, I believe the future of Magic the Gathering is not Magic Arena. I have no faith in that program, nor in Wizards' ability to grow that program. The future of Magic the Gathering is, and has always been, in paper play and the local game store. A system of organized play needs to come about that supports these things. Pro magic may be dead, but competitive magic is vital. Organized play is vital, a critical part of the game, and the best place for it to happen is in person and in paper. Your mom will tell other moms. Your little sister will know. Your twin brothers will know. So will their twin friends. Even your dog will know. Even me, Mix-a-Lot, I'll know. This game store owner will know, and so will these guys, and so will she, and the actual creator of Magic will also know. Because when you're the world's number one Magic player, the world will know.